This story happened to my friend Maria and me about five years ago. We were walking home from work one evening. We worked together and also lived on the same street. So we often walked home together. That night, the weather was really nice. We decided to stop at a park. We went to the edge of the park and sat on a bench, eating some food we had brought from work. It was peaceful, and Maria took a photo of us together and posted it on her Snapchat story. We stayed there for about 10 more minutes and were not in any hurry to leave. Maria was looking at her story again to see who had viewed it, which she always did. Then she said, That's strange. She said that a guy named Jack, who was not on her friends list, had viewed her story. She said she didn't know who this guy was. I took her phone and looked at it. I saw that she had made her story public, so everyone on their snap map could see it if they clicked on our location in the park. I turned off that setting for her because I thought it was dangerous to have it on. We got up and left after that to walk the rest of the way home. As we walked down the path through the park, we noticed a man start to walk behind us. He looked to be about 40 and wore sunglasses and a black sweater. I hadn't seen him at all when we had been in the park, but I figured this had to be a coincidence. But the man kept following us as we walked. I got a little bit worried because the part of our walk home was going into a more quiet area where there weren't many people around. We decided to walk faster, but when we did, the man seemed to speed up as well. We had about 10 more minutes to make it home, and we thought we were just being paranoid, but we were really scared at this point. Then, out of nowhere, the man started running towards us. We both turned and ran off the path into a slightly wooded area, and the man did too. We ran up a hill and finally reached a quiet sidewalk where we saw a guy walking his two dogs. We approached him, and the man who was chasing us stopped and ran in the other direction. We told the man with the dogs that we thought we were being chased, and he watched out for us as we walked a couple of blocks away. Then we walked all the way back home. We made it back all right, but we were very careful. It was a very strange thing, and we were sure it was the guy who saw Maria's story. We are convinced of that. Someone I didn't know added me on Snapchat one day. His name was Tom. I accepted his friend request, and he started messaging me soon after. The way he messaged me made it seem like he thought he knew me or something. So, I bluntly asked him, Do I know you? He seemed upset by that and said, Are you kidding me? We've known each other since first grade. He jogged my memory, and I started to remember who he was as he explained more. I slowly began to recall what he looked like and how he treated me in high school. I barely knew this guy at all though, I only remembered him from when he used to bully my friends and me. I was more of an alternative girl in high school who hung out with the weird emo kids, and he was a popular football player. He used to tease me constantly about how I dressed and would give me a hard time about everything. As soon as I put two and two together, I blocked him because I wasn't even going to give him a second chance unless he wanted to apologize. Even then, I probably still wouldn't have talked to him. After I blocked him, I went on with my day and eventually found myself on the dating app I was using at the time to make new friends. I saw a new message from somebody named Mike. He was very handsome and wasn't being creepy, just friendly. He seemed really funny, so I gave him a chance. We started talking about our hobbies, what we were both interested in, and many other things. It seemed like we were clicking, so when he asked me out on a date, I said yes. He asked if I could meet him at a local cafe later that night, but I told him I was busy and that we would have to do it sometime this weekend. We both agreed that Saturday night would work. I gave him my number and we talked all week, all day, every day. I was really starting to like him and enjoyed talking to him. It was about 8.30 p.m. when we met at the cafe that Saturday. He told me he was running late, so I waited for him at the table the waitress sat me at. He showed up about 5 to 10 minutes later and apologized a lot. Now before I say anything else, I just want to mention that when Tom was messaging me at the beginning of the story, he never sent me a picture of himself. I vaguely remembered what he looked like from high school, but it had been 5 years since I had seen him, so he could look completely different for all I knew. As soon as I saw Mike though, my stomach turned because he looked nothing like the guy in the pictures. I wasn't sure if I was just overthinking it, so I decided not to say anything. He had the same style and color of hair and the same color of eyes, but other than that, 
he looked completely different. I've met people who look nothing like their pictures before, and it actually turned out to be them. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt before causing a big scene. He excused himself to the restroom after we ordered our food. I took the time I had to look at his pictures once more on the dating app. And as I scrolled through all of his pictures, I realized that he most definitely was not the person I thought I was talking to, and that he was 100% catfishing me. I felt sick to my stomach as soon as I realized this. Nonetheless, I got up and quickly walked to my car. I blocked him immediately on both the dating app and my phone. I put two and two together and couldn't believe this was happening to me. The guy catfishing me was Tom, the guy I blocked on Snapchat and who bullied me all through high school. I went home and tried my best to forget about it, thinking that was the end of it. Well, I was wrong. About a week later, he showed up at my house. Yes, my house. I still have no idea how he found my address. This man was really stalking me. I don't have a peephole on my door, so when I heard someone knocking, I just opened it. It was broad daylight, and I live in a nice neighborhood where everyone watches out for each other. So I wasn't as careful as I should have been, I guess. I was absolutely shocked when I saw Tom standing there. As soon as I opened the door, he pushed his way in. I started yelling at him, telling him to get the hell out of my house. He got very angry quickly, grabbed me by my arms, threw me on the couch and started choking me. He was screaming at me, asking why I wouldn't give him a chance. After a few seconds, I don't know what made him stop, but I'm glad he did. I genuinely thought he was going to kill me. He ran out of the house and took off. I called the police on him and they tracked him down and arrested him. I heard he was let out on bail though. I have a restraining order against him now. He knows it. So if he ever comes near me again, he'll go straight to jail. This story happened during my first year of college. It was near the end of the first semester, and I was getting ready for finals. I lived in a dorm right across from the engineering building, which was good since I was an engineering student. I shared a room with my friend Jack, but he was packing to leave for good. College wasn't working out for him, and he dropped out during the last week of the first semester. Anyway, Christmas break passed, and the new year began. I was hopeful as the second semester came, looking forward to finishing my first year of college in a few months. The school told me I would get a new roommate for the second semester. After the break, I returned to the dorm, unpacked my clothes, and got ready for my new roommate to arrive the next day. I also cleaned up because I didn't want to look messy for his first impression. I probably fell asleep around 11 that night until I was woken up by a knock. I started to wake up but quickly went back to sleep. Then I heard it again, much louder this time. I got up and walked to the door, looking through the peephole to see someone standing outside. I opened the door, sleepily saying, Hi, can I help you? The stranger replied, Hi, I'm Dan. This is my dorm. Oh, I said. I thought you weren't coming until tomorrow. He ignored me and walked right past me into the dorm. It felt really awkward and uncomfortable being in the room with a stranger. He gave off some strange vibes, but I tried not to judge him too quickly. Some time passed, and as he got settled, I said, I'm going to bed, good night. I went back to my room, and as I lay down, I noticed that someone named Lily added me on Snapchat. I didn't know anyone named Lily, so I looked up her username on Instagram to see if it was a real account. I found an account with the same username that had over a thousand followers and my college's name in the bio. The account was private, but it looked real. I assumed Lily was probably a mutual friend or something, so I added her back. The next morning, I woke up to my alarm clock and saw that I had two Snapchats from her. I opened them up. One was a picture of the main campus building, and the other was a text that said, Hey. I replied, Hey, what's up? And she quickly opened the snap and replied, We chatted on and off throughout the day and she seemed nice. She asked a lot about my life, like what I was studying and what kind of music I liked. We seemed to get along pretty well. Anyway, when I got home that night, I still got strange vibes from Dan. As soon as I walked in the door, I heard Dan's door slam shut. I didn't understand what his deal was, but I thought he might just be shy. I walked into my room and got ready for bed. 
As I reached into my bag, I noticed some of my clothes were bunched up and wrinkled. I knew I didn't do that, and wondered if Dan went through my stuff when I was gone. I went to bed, and fell asleep quickly. After my first day of class, I relaxed in the living room and snapchatted Lily, who was sending me pictures of the lecture hall she was in. After she stopped responding for a bit, I got a bite to eat and sat down in the living room. Then Dan walked in. I greeted him, hoping to make conversation since we had only talked for a minute total since I met him, but he went straight to his room and locked the door after nodding at me. I didn't understand why he acted so weird and didn't want to get to know me, considering we were living together. It seemed strange that he wouldn't talk to me. I didn't want to go the whole semester feeling uncomfortable with a stranger I barely knew. That night I lay in bed and had a hard time falling asleep. I tossed and turned but couldn't get comfortable. The dorm was freezing because Dan kept putting pillows over the vents. I usually would have taken them off, but his distant behavior made me uncomfortable to ask if I could move them. As I lay there thinking about how weird he was, I heard my door creak open. I tried to slow my breathing and close my eyes, pretending to be asleep. I listened carefully as the floorboards creaked. I opened one eye to see Dan standing in my room. I watched as he bent over and started going through my suitcase in the corner. I was really freaked out and didn't want to risk something bad happening if I asked what he was doing. After a couple of minutes he tiptoed out of my room and closed the door. Now, I was wide awake. My mind raced, wondering what he could have been doing in my room, especially in the middle of the night. I snapchatted Lily, telling her what happened, but she didn't respond, and I assumed she was sleeping. Hours passed, and I finally got out of bed. I went to the kitchen and made some ramen, trying to calm myself down. As I was eating at the table, I noticed that Dan's door was wide open. The light from the kitchen projected into his room, and I could see his nightstand. I texted Lily again, telling her I was still up because of my creepy and weird roommate. Just as I sent that snap to her, a faint light came from Dan's nightstand in his room. I got up and walked closer until I was just outside his room, where I could see that it was his phone. I slowly crept into his room and grabbed it off the nightstand. I took it back to the living room area, sat down, and tapped on his screen. As it lit up, I felt myself turn pale as I read the screen. There were two Snapchat notifications from me. I set the phone down on the kitchen table and went straight to my room. I locked the door and packed up every single thing of mine into my suitcase and bags. As I walked by his room, I could see Dan moving around in his bed, realizing he was awake. Just as I was about to leave, I heard him get up. He said, where's my phone, in a very serious tone. I didn't respond and left the dorm as quickly and quietly as possible and never returned. I went to my friend's dorm, who lived in a complex across the street, and stayed with him for the night. The next day, I requested a dorm change from the school, and I eventually got it. I'll never know what Dan's plan was, but I'm thankful I'll never have to find out. This story happened to me last summer. I'm a 20-year-old guy, and in my junior year of college, I was just relaxing on my phone in bed one night, a little past 1 a.m. I was about to go to sleep when I saw a Snapchat notification that a girl named Lily Brown had added me. Her name sounded sort of familiar to me, but I couldn't say that I knew who she was. So, I went to the app and added her back. Then I went to Instagram and looked up her name to see if I recognized her. Unfortunately, there were many girls by the name of Lily Brown, so I had no idea which one was her, if any. I went on Snapchat again and looked at her snap score. When I saw that it was only five, I immediately realized that this was probably a fake account, and then I deleted her on Snapchat. After that, I went to bed. The next morning when I woke up, my phone had several Snapchats from Lily Brown. At that point, I realized that I had my Snapchat settings so that even people who weren't my friends could still send me Snapchats. The first two were text chats. The first one read, you deleted me. The second one said, ha 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 ha. The next two snaps were both pictures and they were all black with text of her cursing at me in various ways. I was pretty alarmed to see this. And when I clicked on her account again, I saw that I had been blocked by her. 
I really didn't know who this was or why they were messing with me. Then came the scariest part. When I opened my blinds in my bedroom window that morning, I saw a sticky note stuck to it from the outside. I had to go outside to get it to see what was written on it. And when I read it, it said, Watch yourself. I remembered after that that my Snapchat location was always on. Even though I had deleted the Lily user, we had still been friends for a good 10 minutes, which was more than enough time for her to screenshot my place on the map. I texted all of my friends asking them if this was a joke, but to this day, they all seriously deny it. And I really don't think it was any of them. Nothing happened again, but I've since made sure that my location is always off. One day after walking home from school, I stopped at the park along the way and started swinging on the swing set. I live in a small town, but it wasn't very common for the park to be completely empty, especially on a nice day like it was. I thought it was strange, but I didn't think too much of it. After swinging for a while, a guy I recognized from Snapchat approached me. His name was Dave. We recognized each other right away and he sat on the swing next to mine. He seemed a little upset and asked why I had blocked him and stopped talking to him. I told him that my mom saw our messages and made me block him because of our age difference. I was 14, and he was 21 or 22, I think. I didn't think much of it at the time, but as I got older, I realized how wrong it was and that he was a predator. What if we killed her, he said. He said that completely out of nowhere, and it shocked me. I let out a slight laugh because I thought he was joking. I quickly realized he was serious. I asked him if he was crazy and told him to get away from me and leave me alone. He started apologizing, saying he was sorry and that he was joking. But he wasn't joking. I could just tell. I started walking home, and he followed me. He was getting really angry, and the more I told him to leave me alone, the angrier he got. I really didn't want to lead him to my house because if he knew where I lived, it would be bad, especially because of the way he was talking about my mom. He continued following me all the way to my neighborhood. We had been walking for about 10 minutes, and he kept rambling about how he loved me and wanted to be with me. I tried to stay calm and not make the situation worse, but inside I was freaking out and didn't know what to do. I hoped we would run into someone so I could ask for help, but of course, there was no one around. I thought it was unusual because on a day like this, people are usually scattered around the park, walking their dogs, or kids playing in their yards or riding bikes. There might even be football practice at the nearby middle school we pass on our walk. But there was nobody. Cars passed by now and then, but I was scared they would ignore me, which could make Dave even angrier, and who knows what he might do to me. This man was literally twice my size, and I'm not exaggerating at all. He could completely overpower me if he wanted to. Before I turned onto my street, I took my phone halfway out of my pocket and quickly texted my dad, saying EMERGENCY in all caps. He called me within 20 seconds and I picked up the phone. I started running toward my house and told him what was happening. Dave started running after me, grabbed me and pushed me to the ground. My dad ran outside, got in his truck, and began searching for me. He found me lying on the ground a few houses down in one of our neighbor's front yards with Dave on top of me. He rushed over and practically jumped out of the truck, then began beating the hell out of Dave. I'm pretty sure he would have killed him if I wasn't there. My dad told me to go home, lock the door, and call mom. He kept Dave restrained, and one of our neighbors came out and called the police. They arrested Dave as soon as they got there. They put my dad in cuffs too until they learned the full story. My dad didn't even end up getting arrested for beating Dave up. We told the police officer everything, including how Dave had sexually assaulted me and threatened to kill me and my mom. Dave is on the sex offenders list now and will be forever. My dad saved me that day and ever since then, he has been my true hero. I've had Snapchat ever since I was 13. I'm a sophomore in high school now and I've made many friends on the app over the years. I use Snapchat every day and have streaks with at least 20 different friends. For those who don't know, a streak on Snapchat is when you and another person send pictures or videos to each other at least once every 24 hours for a number of days in a row. 
Just recently, I checked the added me list on my Snapchat account and saw that several people had added me. I usually never add people I don't know, but I added back the people who seemed legit, with bitmojis that looked real and mutual friends. I added about five or six accounts back and went on with my day. Snapchat also has a setting where you can make your location public to your friends, so you can always see if any of your friends are near you. I've kept this setting turned on since most of my friends have theirs on too. Anyway, a few days went by and I never talked to any of the new friends I added. Later that week, after I got home from soccer practice, I got a snap from one of the new friends named Max. He sent me a random picture of the road, which looked like he took while driving. It was a bit strange, but I sent him back a picture of the textbook I was studying from since I was doing homework. My first instinct was not to reply, but I didn't want to be rude. He replied almost instantly, but I decided to wait a couple of hours to reply since it felt awkward. By the time I finished my homework, it was around 9.30 and I was getting tired. I sent my streaks to my friends, then opened Max's snap. It was the same picture of the road as before. I sent him a streak back in case he wanted to be friends, and once again he replied instantly. I opened the app. It was dark and rainy, so it was hard to see, but the picture looked like it was taken in a neighborhood. I replied by sending him a picture of my room and went to sleep. I was exhausted and fell asleep quickly. I was awakened in the middle of the night by my phone going off. I grabbed it off my nightstand and looked, wiping the sleep from my eyes. As my eyes adjusted to the bright light of the phone, I saw that Max had called me three times on Snapchat and sent me a bunch of messages. To be honest, it creeped me out, and I wondered why he was doing this. My plan was to open the messages, see what he wanted, and then block him. I opened the text messages he sent first. He sent three messages, all saying, hey. I shook my head, confused and annoyed. After that, I opened the pictures he sent. There were four. The first one was the same picture of the road in the rain. The second one looked like a house in my neighborhood, but I couldn't be sure. The third picture made my skin turn cold. It was a picture of my house, taken from inside a car parked on the street. Completely shocked, I just stared at it, trying to convince myself it wasn't my house or that I was in some kind of crazy dream. As the 10 second timer counted down, it automatically went to the next picture, which terrified me. It was a picture of my kitchen, taken from inside the house. As the picture disappeared from my screen, it took me back to the chat, where it showed his bitmoji in the bottom corner of the screen, which meant he was just sitting there in the chat, watching me open each picture. I did the only thing I felt I could do. I screamed and ran into my parents' room to wake them up. It took me a minute to get them to fully understand the situation since I kept fumbling over my words. My dad got up and went downstairs, yelling that anyone down there needed to leave. My mom and I followed a short distance behind, completely horrified. After searching the house, we didn't find anyone, but we found clear evidence of someone being in the house. The door to our screen patio was busted, allowing easy access for whoever came inside. We also found wet footprints all across the main floor and even partially up the stairs. We called the police and they arrived to conduct a full investigation. I had to hand over my phone so they could retrieve any evidence and find out who this person was. Even after months of investigating, the police were unable to identify the intruder. The device that Max or whoever it was used to Snapchat me was found in my backyard. It was an iPad that belonged to the city library and was reported stolen a couple of weeks ago. Whoever it was knew what they were doing and was able to scramble the location on the device, making its last known locations impossible to track. Ever since that happened, I deleted Snapchat and made a new account where I only have people I know. I also turned off my Snapchat location and will never turn it on again. I'm lucky that I woke up when I did. If I hadn't, who knows what would have happened. My name is Bailey, and I'm a 24-year-old woman. I recently moved into a new apartment because of some problems with my old neighbor. He was in his mid-40s. One morning, when I was leaving for work, I noticed him staring at me through his window as I walked to my car. This kept happening, and every time I walked to my car, he would be there, staring. His behavior got weirder. 
One night, as I was falling asleep, I heard someone buzz my room from the entrance. I wasn't expecting anyone, so I opened my door and crept down the hallway to see who it was. When I peeked around the corner down the staircase, I saw him. He creepily smiled at me and waved. Not wanting to make things worse, I walked up to the locked glass door and said, Can I help you? He hesitated but replied, Hello, may I come inside? I think we should be friends. It was very strange and creepy given the situation. I tried to think he was just being nice and said, I'm sorry, I can't tonight. I need to go to sleep. In response, he punched the glass door and yelled at me to let him in. His reaction scared me, and I ran back to my room and locked the door. I was terrified, knowing I had a psychotic stalker neighbor. I ended up finding a new apartment. It was 20 minutes further from my work, but it was worth it to feel safe. Some time passed, and I finally felt comfortable in my new apartment. One morning, as I was getting ready for work, I got a notification on my phone that someone added me on Snapchat. I opened it and saw that it was my old friend Jack, who I was really close to in high school. I added him back, and we started talking for the first time in years. We snapped back and forth all day, and he eventually asked if I wanted to hang out next Friday. I said I'd love to and suggested we go to the old bowling alley we used to hang out at on the weekends in high school. When Friday came, Jack said he could pick me up at 7.30, so I got ready in my apartment. At about 7.20, I looked at my phone and realized I forgot to give him my address. When I opened the app to message him, I saw he had sent me a black screen snap saying, Here, no rush, at 7.15. I snapped him back saying, Geez dude, how do you know where I live lol? He replied with another black screen saying, I just used your Snapchat location and it took me to you. Despite being a little creeped out, I checked and realized I had my Snapchat location on, which was strange since I don't remember turning it on. I walked out to the front where I saw the white Honda Civic he said he would be driving. It was dark outside and the windows were tinted, making it impossible to see into the car. I walked towards the passenger side door and just as I was about five feet away, the driver's side door opened and Hansen got out. He started walking around the car towards me, like he was going to open my door. It caught me by surprise since it didn't seem like something Hansen would do, considering we were always just friends in high school. As I got closer, I started to notice how Hansen looked different. He seemed taller than I remembered. As I got closer, I was finally able to make out his face a little better, and that's when I realized it wasn't Hansen. I initially assumed I had the wrong car, so I stopped and apologized, telling the guy I thought he was someone else. The guy looked up and made direct eye contact with me. It was the stalker from my old apartment. I screamed and sprinted as fast as I could towards the vestibule. He chased after me, yelling at me to stop. As soon as I got inside, I darted up the stairs to my room. When I got to the top of the staircase, I turned to see him running to the door just as it was about to shut. He managed to wedge his hand in the door so it wouldn't lock, and it flew open. Everyone in the apartment probably heard me screaming as I sprinted towards my room and fumbled with the key. I opened the door and closed it behind me, hearing the approaching footsteps of the guy chasing after me. Just as I got in, I managed to lock the door chain before he hurled himself at my door. The door wasn't fully locked, so it was partially open. The door chain was the only thing keeping me safe from him. He shouted at me to let him in as I pushed as hard as I could to get the door to shut all the way. He reached his hand through the slight opening in the door, but I was able to slam my body weight into it, crushing his hand. The neighbors must have heard the commotion, and a couple of guys came out and threatened him, which scared him off. My heart was pounding, and I thanked them for helping me. I went to the police and was able to get a restraining order put on him, and I plan on taking him to court this spring. I'm very lucky that I got away from him. If there's one thing I've learned from all of this, it's to always make sure you know who you're talking to online, especially before meeting up. I'm a 19-year-old girl and just graduated high school last year. This was by far the scariest thing that ever happened to me. It all started midway through my senior year. I was pretty popular in high school and I would get added on Snapchat by new people almost every day. I had so many friends on Snapchat that I didn't even know a good number of them. 
One night, I was home alone relaxing in bed and watching Netflix while my parents were out shopping. I casually went on Snapchat and saw that I had several new snaps. One of them was from a username that I didn't recognize. I didn't know who it was, but I occasionally got snaps from people I didn't know, and if I didn't want to talk to them, I'd just delete them without any problem. After responding to a few of my friends, I opened up the snap from the unknown user to see who it was. Their username was pretty strange. It was just a bunch of random letters and numbers that didn't spell any words. When I opened the snap, it was a video of a house. The video started by showing the house from the street and then zoomed in towards a window. When I looked at the video again, I saw that the house was mine. It was nighttime in the snap just as it was outside, so it seemed to have just been taken. This immediately creeped me out and I went from being relaxed to outright scared. The snap had been sent from the user 22 minutes ago, so I hoped they had left. But just to be safe, I slowly looked out my window towards the street. When I did, I couldn't see anyone or anything. It all seemed quiet, like a normal night. That made me feel a little bit better, but then I got another Snapchat from the user. With my hands shaking, I opened it up to see. My fiancé and I bought a house about six months ago that sits on 15 acres of land. We have a lot of property. Most of it is wooded, but we plan to do something with it one day. One day, when my fiancé Tony was out running errands, I decided to take the dirt bike out back through the trails and do some exploring. We had been living here for half a year, but we had probably only seen maybe half of our property. I spent about an hour roaming around the trails, having fun on my bike until I saw a person in the distance. I was sure I was still on my property, so I made my way to the man. He started waving at me as I got closer, and I waved back. Hey Emily, long time no see, he said. Who are you? I asked, concerned. It's me, Dave. Remember biology class in high school? We used to talk. Oh yeah, hey. So what are you doing here on my property? I asked. Oh, I'm sorry to intrude. He said, I didn't know I had a new neighbor. I live just behind you on Oak Road. Oak Road was directly behind my house, parallel to the road I lived on. I was just walking around and must have lost track of time and went too far. Sorry to bother you. It's okay, no worries, I told him. But something didn't feel right. His tone and delayed responses seemed very sketchy. Well, I better take off so I can get back home, I said. Wait, he said. Maybe we should catch up a bit. It's been so long since we have seen each other. He started walking closer to me, but I told him I really had to get going and that it wasn't a good time. I took off and headed back to my house. I felt really creeped out by the whole situation, so I called my fiancé when I got home to tell him everything that happened. Later that night, Tony and I were watching TV, like we usually did before bed and we were discussing the situation with Dave from earlier in the day. Tony reassured me that I was overthinking and being paranoid, and that it was nothing to worry about. He said that if we ever saw Dave again, he would tell him to back off. Just as Tony finished that sentence, there was a light knocking sound on our bedroom window, which spooked both of us. We both got up to see what was going on. Tony opened the blinds, and then the window, and there he was. Dave was standing right there, looking directly at us with what looked like a combat knife. Tony closed the window and locked it immediately. Then he told me to lock myself in the bathroom. He grabbed his hunting rifle and went to find Dave. He found him in our backyard, running towards the trails. That's when Tony fired a couple of shots in Dave's direction, purposely missing him to send a message. If he ever came back, Tony would shoot him. Dave took off, and we haven't seen him since. We debated calling the police but we didn't. We were worried that Tony could get in trouble for shooting at him, even though it was kind of in self-defense. Since Dave didn't physically attack us and didn't break in, we were concerned that Tony could be charged with attempted murder or something. We didn't want to risk it, so we stayed quiet. Tony got me my own rifle and taught me how to use it. I've been practicing my aim a few times a week with targets out back. If it ever came down to needing it, I'd be ready. We found out that Dave didn't even live near us and had been stalking me on Snapchat through the Snap Map. I'm sure most of you know, but you can show your location to your friends on Snapchat, and it will show them exactly where you are. 
I thought I had it turned on for only friends to see. Well, it turns out it was public, and anyone who added me could see my location. As soon as I found that out, I turned my location off completely, and even deleted Snapchat. I didn't use it much anyway, so I didn't need it on my phone. I hope we never hear from him again. This story happened to me just a couple of months ago. I'm a guy, and I'm in college. It's been a few years since I graduated high school, but I still sometimes add friends from high school, or they add me. One night, as I was playing video games, I saw a Snapchat notification. I looked at it and saw that I had been added by a girl named Mackenzie. I added her back, not knowing who she was. I figured maybe she went to my college or something. After I added her back, she sent me a text through Snapchat, and I opened it. She said, Hey. I responded back saying, Hi. She then responded almost immediately with, Do you remember me? We went to high school together. I responded back, asking her what grade she was, because I really didn't remember her, and I knew basically everybody that I went to high school with. She then said she graduated the same year as me, 2017. This made me slightly skeptical because I graduated in 2018, not 2017, and I told her that. She then told me that she meant to say 2018, but it was a typo. We talked for a short time, but something seemed off to me. After about 10 minutes of awkward chatting, she asked if I wanted to hang out, and that's when I knew this was probably not a real girl. I looked at her profile, and her snap score was decently high, but there was no indication of any last name, so I couldn't look her up anywhere. I decided I didn't want to take a chance, so I left her on red and went to sleep. The next day, I had forgotten all about it and went about my day. Doing normal Saturday things like mowing the lawn and playing more video games. In the afternoon, I got another snap from the girl. I opened it and saw a picture of me mowing the lawn, taken from inside a car that was driving down my street. It had the words on the snap that said, Consider this a warning. I immediately deleted the user and blocked them. I told my parents about it, and they seemed a little concerned, but we didn't go to the police. Over the next few days I was sort of scared but nothing else happened. I just don't know why this person was messing with me, but I'm glad it's over. I used to walk to school with my two friends, Jack and Ben, every day in high school. We lived on the same street and only about 10 minutes from school, so it was nice. One day, we stopped at Ben's house to see a new car that his dad had gotten. We ended up losing track of time and realized that we were going to be late. Because of this, we decided to run the whole way to school. We were athletic kids, so we made it to our classes on time. But after our first classes of the day, Ben told us that he had lost his phone. He said it must have fallen out of his pocket while we were running, so on our way home that day, we retraced all of our steps. We couldn't find the phone, so Jack called Ben's phone, but there was no answer. We waited a bit, and then called again. This time, the call got declined after two rings. This meant someone had the phone and didn't want to answer us. This made Ben mad, but he then remembered he always had his location on in Snapchat. We got excited, thinking we might be able to find his phone this way. We looked on Snapchat, and sure enough, his location was still on. We saw that his phone had been on a street about 10 minutes ago, and Ben's bitmoji was in a car, meaning whoever had his phone was driving. We needed them to log into Snapchat again to see where the location would update to, so I decided to send a snap to the person saying, Hey, I think you have my friend's phone. He lost it earlier today and we just want to get it back. A short time later, the snap I sent was opened, but nobody replied. This was concerning. However, we looked again at the snap map and were happy to see that the location was still on. We saw that Ben's phone appeared to be in the middle of some woods. It was pretty strange to see, but Ben was furious. By this time, we figured three high school dudes could handle whoever had Ben's phone if they wanted trouble. We all set out to the location, and when we arrived, we saw that it was a state park with a trail leading into the woods. It didn't look like the trail was used much, because there was grass growing all over it. We all followed the snap map and walked deeper and deeper into the woods. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous. Finally, we saw ourselves getting close, 
and we came around a corner on the path to see Ben's phone. But the phone was hanging from a tree by a string, dangling there. We all stopped in our tracks and froze. I got a bad feeling. We stood there and stared at it for a good ten seconds. Then, the phone jiggled around from the string being pulled as if to encourage us to go grab the phone. It looked like some kind of trap, and I had a strong feeling come over me that we needed to leave. The three of us turned and ran as fast as we could out of there and didn't look back. We got back to my car quickly, jumped inside, and backed up. As we did, I saw three large men start to emerge from the woods entrance. We didn't stop and drove all the way home. Ben immediately disabled everything on his phone and reported it as stolen. He got a new phone the next day. I don't know what would have happened to us if we had tried to get the phone there in the woods, but I'm glad we didn't.